Hello, my name is Sean Omer, Executive Director here at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. I want to thank you for joining me for another One Night Stand. This is a series of short uh, programs that look at one work by one artist for one evening, hence the name One Night Stand. Uh, these are then recorded and put onto our YouTube channel for enjoyment and education later. Uh, tonight, we're going to look at a work by Margaret Burke White. Um, and it's a work that's actually on view currently in a temporary exhibition that we opened at the beginning of June called Work in Society in the 1930s, American Paintings and Photography from the Sjogren Meyer Collection. Um, and in this exhibition, which looks at work of the 1930s, as the title indicates, um, there are not uh, one, but actually four photographs by Margaret Burke White amongst many other really important um, painters and photographers. It's well worth a visit um, to the museum for this temporary exhibition, which ends in mid-September. So if you are watching this uh, later and um, are, you know, uh, and have the time, it would be wonderful to come down to the museum if you're able, uh, if you live locally or in the region, uh, to take a look at this exhibition. It's all drawn from a private collection um, in Minneapolis. And so it's not something that's readily available. It's not a show that we could put together ourselves from our own collection or, um, or be able to remount um, very easily. So, um, so it's well worth a visit. It really does take a comprehensive look at American art in uh, the 1930s. Uh, as well as a few predecessors in the 1920, 1920s, and then you know what happens after the Depression as we enter into World War II in the 1940s. So um, well worth the visit, very different kind of uh, view of the 1930s than you might see in the work of someone like Marvin Cohn or Grant Wood, whom we also have on view um, regularly. And so but they take a very different approach um, to depicting the 30s than what you'll see um, in work and society in the 1930s. So do come on down. Tonight, we're going to look at one particular work from that show, the Margaret Burke White Fort Peck Dam in Montana. Uh, and for that, I'm going to share my screen here. So give me just a second here. Okay, and then... There we go, we'll go full screen on it. So um, as I said, we're going to look at Margaret Burke White's Fort Peck Dam, Montana, 1936. Um, and it is an exhibition that is a, a, a piece that is in the current exhibition. Um, here is a photograph. Um, this is not the dam. This is Margaret Burke White, um, a rather glamorous photograph of Margaret Burke White. Uh, she was born in 1904 in the Bronx, um, but actually was raised in New Jersey. Uh, and uh, her uh, father, a non-practicing a uh, Jew who had a wide variety of interests and his, and uh, her mother, an Irish Catholic, um, uh, really created or fostered an environment that really encouraged um, uh, thought, um, uh, open thinking, uh, uh, exploration, um, uh, from not just Margaret, but also her brother and her sister. Um, it was a very, very kind of progressive um, childhood. Uh, and um, uh, Margaret Burke White picked up the camera really as a hobby, as a child. Um, and that really was fostered by her father, um, who had a fascination uh, with cameras. Uh, and so it, it kind of went very, very well. However, uh, Margaret Burke White did not go to, uh, did not initially go to, to college uh, to study photography. In fact, um, her father, was a, who was a naturalist, interested in things like engineering as well, um, uh, certainly kind of set the stage for uh, Margaret entering Columbia uh, in, in uh, 1921 or 22, I've seen uh, sort of both dates, um, where she studied uh, herpetology, which is the study of amphibious animals. Uh, and she bounced around to a lot of different schools. She, um, uh, uh, before I get ahead of myself, while she was at Columbia, for a year. She also enrolled in the Clarence White School of Photography um, and because she was just interested in photography. That was not really the degree that she was pursuing, but she was interested in it um, uh, in, in the Clarence White School, no relationship uh, there um, to Margaret Burke White. Uh, but, um, but then she leaves Columbia. She studied, she enrolls at the University of Michigan. 
um, where she studies zoology. She's also at Purdue. She's at Western Reserve University. Uh, and she finally graduates um, from Cornell University in Ithaca um, with a degree in biology in 1927. The following year, in 1928, she moves to Cleveland, where she sets up a photography studio. So even though she has her degrees um, in, in biology and has studied zoology, uh, she sets herself up right away in 1928 as a photographer in Cleveland and begins to take a series of industrial photographs that come to the attention of Henry Luce. Henry Luce is the publisher of Time Magazine and a Fortune Magazine, um, and he hires her in 1929 um, as a staff photographer, the first staff photographer of a Fortune Magazine. So right away, she's landed an excellent job um, in, in, in photography. It was very, very taken by her work. Um, one of the first assignments that she had was to go to the Soviet Union uh, uh, and, and photograph there, which was very, very unusual, very highly unusual. And she um, uh, did a very nice um, a series of, of photos uh, for Fortune magazine of uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, here is a, another more sort of work-related kind of photo of Margaret Burke White um, that you see here. And then here is Margaret Burke White uh, is sort of in action. Uh, she was sort of fearless in many ways here photographing uh, in New York, uh, and you can see in a very sort of precarious uh, situation. Uh, and, um, and here, uh, later, uh, beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about today, which is a piece from 1936, um, this is her work um, as a photojournalist in World War II, um, which is what she went on to do after, uh, after the piece that we're going to talk about today. So she's working for Henry Luce for Fortune magazine in the very late 20s and early 30s. In 1936, Henry Luce offers her, offers her a position as one of four staff photographers for a new magazine that he's going to create called Life Magazine. And uh, she's the only uh, female photographer of the four staff photographers. Um, and so she joins Life Magazine in 1936 and is with them through the rest of the decade and then on and off um, in, in the 40s. This is the photograph um, that is in the exhibition. This is Fort Peck Dam um, and it dates from 1936. And, and Henry Luce um, or the editors of Life sent um, uh, Margaret Burke White to, um, uh, to Montana to photograph um, this um, dam that was being constructed. It's about midway through the six year construction um, of uh, the dam. And you can see here, um, she's, she's actually um, uh, uh, photographed uh, some of these wonderful uh, structures here um, and is careful to include um, at the center um, these two little figures, which gives you a sense of um, uh, this structure. This is actually a structure, I believe, of the spillway. Uh, it's not the dam proper, but the spillway uh, about two miles away from, from the dam. Um, and it's interesting because this photograph, this single photograph um, that Margaret Burke White created in 1936 on assignment for life um, becomes the cover of the first Life magazine. November 23rd, 1936 is the first issue of Life magazine and Margaret Burke White's photograph graces the cover. Uh, and interestingly, the photograph was actually not a vertical photograph. It was actually a horizontal photograph. And it becomes cropped, I'm gonna go back here, cropped to fit onto um, Life magazine. Now we don't know if Margaret Burke White cropped the photograph or if Life magazine cropped the photograph, but we do know that she did issue the photograph in a vertical format like this. Um, uh, and so she must have been pleased with the cropping of it, or maybe she just liked the fact that this particular cropping so well aligned to the cover of Life magazine. Again, unknown uh, at this point. Um, but here is, is the original photograph that she shot, which was, which was wider. It was much more of a horizontal format. But it's not the only photograph that Margaret Burke White created for, uh, of, 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 um, of Fort Peck Dam. Um, this was really a photo essay. And so inside the magazine, uh, one finds all kinds of other photographs that Margaret Burke White shot on assignment 
Um, and it's just she's just most famous for that one image that graced the cover of Life magazine, largely because it was the first cover of Life magazine. Um, but there are many wonderful images um, from uh, from her her time there. Uh, she took quite a few of them, and they become almost abstract. I mean, look at this. Now, the figure gives you a sense of scale, but this is really all about line and light and shadow and silhouette. I mean, it's really an extraordinary composition. She just really has positioned herself in a way where she has this great contrast um, of dark and light, um, and, and it really is a, a brilliant, a brilliant photograph. Um, or here, where you can see, you know, the the uh, the workers working on um, elements here of the of the dam itself, um, and it gives you not only a sense of scale, but also in this case, this is really much more about the work and workers um, than it is uh, the abstract qualities of the thing that they that they are creating. And here, without uh, figures, um, this really wonderful play of line and shape and form and depth and light and shadow. It's just really, really an incredible um, uh, photograph. I mean, it's really not of the dam per se. She's not documenting the dam. She's really looking at something here uh, where she's fascinated by the elements that go in into the dam. Uh, and it's a part a part of that story. It's a part of that that photo, uh, that photo photojournalistic story that she's that she's creating. Um, and here, for example, is is a is a page spread um, from that 1936 Life magazine, that first Life magazine. So you can see, you know, on the left, you know, she's get, you get the the gutter of the magazine in the middle, and so the Tin City rodeos on one side, run all night. She got that image that we looked at just now of these men working on uh, on this very large. Uh, element of the dam, um, but you've got, and you've got little, you know, individual headshots of key players um, who are uh, uh, a part of the creation of the dam. And then you had all of these other scenes around of the various workers in a non-work moment um, so that you can kind of see what life is like when they're not working um, on, on the dam itself. It, it really, the creation of the dam really created kind of city, a work city. Um, and there were all kinds of people who were there. There were people who were working there. And then there were all the people that supported the people who were working there. Um, so it's really, really kind of a fascinating photo essay. Here, another page spread at the Moose Market, um, where they've got, you know, meats and vegetables. Um, and, and you've got this wonderful little pop-up town um, that kind of uh, in the middle of the, uh, of, of sort of nowhere in a way. Um, in Montana and and sort of this little pop-up town that all sort of supported the creation of the building of this six-year um, project of the building of the Fort Peck Dam. Here, another page spread, uh, entering New Deal, um, uh, woman drinking, uh, you got these other scenes um, uh, from, uh, from the magazine, the, the cow towns that get their milk from kegs. Um, so a little bit of text, but it really is primarily a photo a photo essay. Um, we're here, Montana, Saturday night. Fini, uh, Fini is the name of a bar um, in this town. Um, and here you get a scene of people at that bar and then a laundry scene. Um, or here, again, this is from the same issue, 10,000 Montana relief workers make whoopee on Saturday night. So it gives you a real sense of, of the other life um, that, that is going on. So, so while she's known for that cover image on life, there's so much more on the inside of that same Life magazine that kind of gives a much broader, much more complete uh, presentation of what this what this trip to Fort Peck Dam was. Um, and so we, uh, I do have some of the of the uh, uh, of the stills um, to share with you, so you see them a little bit better than you do in those page spreads um, I was sharing with you. So here again, um, people who are dancing, you know, sort of in non-work hours. Um, people who, you know, until they came to work on the project were strangers to each other. Um, you really realize this project and the creation of this, of this little town that that brought all of these people together, both the workers and then the, the services to support those workers, like a market uh, place. I'm um, here, uh, a man with a gun, as you can see in his, in his waistband there. 
um, probably some sort of uh, uh, law enforcement. Um, but there in front of Moose Market with groceries, meats, and vegetables, you would need a grocery store uh, to support um, this, this little town, this little pop-up town um, that you see here um, in the in the paint spread, you, you've kind of broken up by the gutter. Um, but here you kind of see the, the whole of it. You've got kind of a main, a main drag, a main downtown, um, and then these these pop-up little towns, not a train site. Um, uh, and I imagine it gets, you know, very hot and very cold. Uh, depending upon the season. Um, but here, just a wonderful Margaret Burke White photograph, different photograph of, um, of, the, same, of the same project. Here, entering New Deal, um, and you see, of course, the end is backwards um, and, and, and in all cases. Um, but here, a group of children um, standing by, uh, by this sign. Uh, and this is Carrie's apartment. So, you know, you, you would rent an apartment. Um, and you can see that it's you know pretty pretty humble, uh, you know pretty basic, um, but you know would have would have suited the purpose there. You can see repairs to the wood. You can uh, again, you know, a wonderful you know, the way Burke White has positioned herself. Um, you know, it, it really you know it captures all this wonderful light um, as and and as well as the sort of uh, the lack of glamour um, in uh, in in these in these apartments. Here, kind of that part of that main street, um, you've got um, the Buckhorn Club, you've got a barber shop next to some place that gives you permanence, that sort of makes sense. Got a shoe shop, uh, you know, uh, realty, you know, you, all of the little things that you need um, in a town um, are sort of all here in very, very modest buildings, um, uh, but they do provide all of the services. Um, necessary to to keep you know um, a town like this going. Here, a photograph um, that we saw in the page spreads. The woman drinking was cropped significantly in the page spread, but um, uh, many um, commenters on this um, uh, photograph uh, are careful to point out that she's standing beneath a sign that says "No beer sold to Indians," um, and kind of reflecting uh, the prejudices. Um, of of the time, um, right next to a little poster, a gallant leader, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Um, so very, very interesting kind of uh, dichotomy there and uh, with women, you know, um, drinking some form presumably of alcohol out of a out of a small glass, perhaps a shot glass. Here, the uh, uh, sort of entertainment, uh, the local entertainment. Um, and probably prior to one of those images of, of dancing, um, you can see very, very plain and rustic interiors. Um, but, you know, and, and the band is quite compressed there, but they've got all the instruments for making some, some, uh, some enjoyable music um, for, for these workers in their off hours. Um, here, a different view of that bar, Fini. Um, and uh, it's a little bit different than the one on the page spread, but very, but the same people are are in here. Um, and you know, and you 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 brought your family to the bar. It was you know it was a community thing. Um, so you see the little girl um, uh, sitting on the bar, uh, and and you really really get this real cross section uh, of the population. Nelson's laundry. This is another one of the images that we saw um, uh, in the page spreads, but very very small or wood and coal for sale here, a woman who, who has a very, very modest um, storefront, if you will. And that's all she does is sell wood and coal so for heating, for heating and cooking. Um, and that was an essential thing. And as you can see from that overall shot, there wasn't, wood wasn't, you know, readily uh, abundant and there were no trees. Um, so that's all the stuff that would have to be brought in. Um, and then this would be how it was sold. Our Landis Beauty, beauty uh, Shop here, uh, again, a very, very modest um, structure, almost looks like a little shed um, and, um, you know, and, and the proprietor. Uh, here, a different view of the town. These are all Margaret Burke White photographs. Um, so this is to provide context for the one that's in the show that is the one that graced the cover of Life Magazine. But you have Max Service Station, um, who also has rooms to let, uh, uh, as well as just kind of one-stop shop there. Um, lots of little, very, very modest structures where people would live. Um, and this is 
probably where people who provided services um, would live. I don't know that the the people who are working on the dam would live in um, in in this town. But this would be the town that supported all of that, um, uh, all of the other needs um, other than work needs um, for the population. Again, very very modest, fascinating automobile. Um, here, kind of looks like it's pieced together. And here are the workers. So you can see they're they are being being brought in or or from the shift. Um, so yeah, they're kind of uh, on on rails um, coming in and out. Um, and these are the people who would be working uh, on the dam and on the structure uh, of the dam, as you see here. Um, you know, it was uh, again um, hard work, long project, six years. Um, but uh, you know, Margaret Burke White is careful to capture both the side of the workers and also the side of the town that supports the workers. And here, um, a, an overall view of, of that more close-up view that, that becomes the cover of Life magazine. This is that side um, uh, uh, spillway. Um, and so you can see um, there, uh, it's a, you know, a separate structure from the rest, um, but you can see this from, an area, from this beautiful aerial photograph. And that is the, the last of, of the slides that I have to share with you uh, today. These um, programs are by nature uh, very short sort of snapshots of, uh, of a work, um, discussing the work, the artist, um, and, uh, and, and perhaps providing some context. And I hope that um, going through the, um, uh, the other photographs, uh, looking at the page spreads and the other photographs in that first issue of Life magazine, um, you have a better sense of the context um, uh, from which that one uh, seminal image comes. Um, it's, it's fascinating to note that it is actually a smaller version of a, of a, of a larger horizontal um, photograph, um, um, but that there were so many other photographs inside um, the magazine is part of this photo essay that looked at both the workers, uh, the, the dam itself, the workers on the dam, and then what the workers were doing um, in uh, in their off hours. So it really was a very thorough and complete um, um, analysis or essay of, um, of, of Fort Peck Dam. Um, but it, at the same time, I think, betrays Margaret Burt White's incredible skill um, and sensitivity and artistry, um, even at this very, very young age, uh, you know, at, at this at this point, you know, she's really only 32 years old, um, and she already has a great sensitivity. Um, uh, she can see the beauty in 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 the world around her, um, in the many forms that that takes, um, and you know, she goes on to a very long um, and and successful career. Um, you know, uh, throughout the 30s, into the 40s, and well, well into the 50s. Um, she lives um, uh, to 1971, late in her life. Um, she has Parkinson's, um, which severely limits her ability to, to continue to photograph. Um, but, um, but she was well recognized very early in her career and throughout her career, uh, and, and really created an incredible body of work. Uh, as I mentioned, four photographs by Margaret Burke White, uh, joined many other photographers and painters in work in society in the 1930s, uh, American paintings and, and photography uh, from the Schoberg Meyer collection. Uh, that's on view now uh, until, uh, until mid-September. So if you uh, can make your way down to the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, please do so. So you can see that photograph and so much more in person and really sort of see uh, the mastery of, of all of the artists that have been assembled um, in that exhibition. Thank you for joining me um, this, uh, today and um, I look forward to seeing you next time.